Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. Today I'm testing the new Spider Farmer SF7000. It's a foldable, four-panel, quantum board style LED grow light. Spider Farmer has earned a great reputation among home growers, and the SF series fixtures are very popular. The SF7000 is the largest fixture in the line. It's designed for 5 by 5 foot coverage. Most of the competitive fixtures in its class are LED bar arrays. It'll be interesting to see how this four panel quantum board compares in terms of both distribution and efficiency. In this review, I'll do an unboxing and hang it up. I'll run it through my official PAR test and we'll analyze the PAR map. I'll also measure the heat output and test the dimmer. And exciting news! I'm going to give this Spider Farmer SF7000 away. Stick around until the end to learn how you could win it in our strain review giveaway. Grow light par testing is part of the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. Our goal is to educate growers about horticultural lighting. You can read our Grow Light articles, try the Grow Light calculator, browse the Grow Light test reports, and find all our Grow Light discount codes. The codes save you money, and using them helps to support our work. For spider farmer fixtures, use discount code CCFC on spiderfarmer.com. The Spider Farmer SF7000 arrived in a plain brown box. It's a large box, but pretty compact for a 5x5 grow light. Ooh, it has a bright green metallic color. Seems they provide plenty of cable. The driver is over here. It's a large Inventronics driver. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. They provide a hanging kit with ratchet pulleys. And the fixture itself, it feels very solid. If it looks small, be aware that it is folded in half. There are two aluminum heat sinks, which are hinged together. It unfolds easily. And you can see the four LED panels. The last thing in the box is the user manual. It's an interesting LED grow light. It's quite compact when folded, and still pretty compact when opened up. Spider Farmer is famous for their quantum board style fixtures. The quantum board style has LED diodes mounted on a printed circuit board. It's an efficient and economical design that is very popular, especially for smaller lights. The SF7000 features four of the Spider Farmer LED panels. It is the largest fixture in the SF line, and it's the largest quantum board style fixture that I've tested. However, it's still much smaller than the intended coverage area. It's meant to cover a 60 by 60 inch space, but unfolded, the Spider Farmer SF7000 is only 29 by 22 inches. In order for there to be a good distribution of light to the edges, the hanging height will have to be fairly high. It comes with hanging cables and two ratchet pulleys, but I'll use four ratchet pulleys to hang it up for the test. They give you the option to mount the driver on top of the unfolded fixture, but they also give you plenty of cable so home growers can easily place the driver outside the grow space. The control box has a power switch, RJ11 ports to daisy chain fixtures, and a dimming knob. It's mounted together with a large Inventronics driver. Spider Farmer uses top-end components. Inventronics is one of the top driver manufacturers. It is a solid, sturdy fixture, but it's not that large, so it's easy to raise up. I just need to connect the power cords, and I'll flip the switch. Wow, that's a lot of light. It's a pretty cool-looking fixture from below. The Spider Farmer SF7000 features sole diodes. You can see the different color temperatures. They use a mix of 3000K and 5000K full spectrum diodes, along with 660 nanometer red diodes. Each board has 429 diodes, which gives the SF7000 a total of 1716 diodes. The published power draw is 650 watts, so there are 2.64 diodes per watt. The diodes are excellent but the number of diodes per watt is lower than some competitive fixtures. The diodes are distributed evenly across the boards, and the four boards are spaced out on the heat sinks. However, for 5x5 coverage, I cannot help but think that it would be more efficient to place them further apart, but this is a convenient and compact light. Before I run it through the PAR test, I need to let the diodes warm up and stabilize. Let's take a quick look at what Spider Farmer has to say. This is the product page for the SF7000 on spiderfarmer.com. We can find some data to estimate how it'll perform in my PAR test and your gardens. First, you can see the list price is about $1,000.
but it's offered for just about 800 You get an additional discount with our code, CCFC. And they offer free shipping to most places. Here you can see that the listed power draw is 650 watts. And they list a photon efficiency of 2.9 micromoles per joule. In some other images, they provide useful information. But I'll make my own PAR maps. Before I do that, let's take these data and run them through the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. It lets you cut through the marketing and get a realistic sense of what a fixture can do in your garden. In the calculator on the right, we load all our tested fixtures. And in the calculator on the left, you can enter data about any grow light. I'll enter the data about the Spider Farmer SF7000. The power draw is listed at 650 watts. If you use discount code CCFC on spiderfarmer.com, your cost will be about $776. And then we need to enter the PPF, or photon efficiency. The calculator gives options for different types of PPF data. Unless you know otherwise, you should assume manufacturer data are calculated values. Spider Farmer claims a photon efficiency of 2.9 micromoles per joule. The calculator uses these data to estimate how the fixture will perform. The estimated usable PPF is the amount of light that we expect to reach the canopy. 1,382 micromoles would give the SF7000 a photon efficiency of 2.13 micromoles per watt. That's somewhat more efficient than the SF2000, which I tested last year. A cost efficiency of 56 cents per micromole is excellent. And the calculator predicts that a good grower could harvest 37 ounces. However, the calculator expects that with 1,382 micromoles of usable light, the SF7000 will be able to cover 21.3 square feet. So it's unlikely to completely fill in a 5x5 PAR map, but it would be too much light for a 4x4. Following our grow light testing protocol, I set it up in a 150 by 150 centimeter test area, which is just about 5x5 feet. I'm making sure it is centered and square. As I suspected, I had to hang it pretty high. The hanging height here is 64 centimeters, or about 25 inches. And the maximum PPFD is right in the center at 1,000 micromoles per square meter. It's time for the test. I use an Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor to measure the PPFD, or photon density, in each square in the grid. With normal concentrations of carbon dioxide, plants do best between 500 and 1,000 micromoles per square meter. Above 1,000 and you risk photo inhibition and light burn. So I always set the maximum PPFD in my tests to 1,000 micromoles per square meter. If the density of light is less than 500 micromoles per square meter, plants will not reach their full potential. So the trick for any grow light fixture is to get the edges and corners up to 500 without bringing the center over 1,000. In order to fully light a PAR map, a fixture needs to produce enough light for the space and it needs to distribute the light well across the intended coverage area. According to the grow light calculator, the SF7000 won't produce quite enough light for this space. And I worried that the small form factor would really hurt distribution, but it's doing a bit better than I expected. Let's check out the PAR map. A PAR map allows us to see the distribution of light density across the canopy. Across the center of this map, there is a great density of light. The maximum PPFD in the center is 1,000 micromoles per square meter, and on both sides, the SF7000 gets PPFD values up to 500. But most of the edges and the corners are below the 500 micromole per square meter threshold. The lowest PPFD value is 339 down in the corner. Ideally, we would like higher densities of light around the periphery. But looking at the map, I don't think the problem is poor distribution. Rather, I think there are just not quite enough photons to fully light a 5x5 space. Let's run the numbers on this test. The hanging height was 64 centimeters, about 25 inches. At that height, the SF7000 had a maximum PPFD of 1,000 micromoles per square meter. The average PPFD across the PAR map is 569.1 micromoles per square meter. That converts to a usable PPF of 1,280.5 micromoles. Although the listed power draw is 650 watts, the SF7000 at 100% power drew only 605 watts during my test. That gives it a usable photon efficiency of 2.12 micromoles per watt, which is almost exactly what the grow light calculator predicted. These are pretty decent numbers, 
Anything above 2 micromoles per watt is great. HPS fixtures only get between 1.1 and 1.5 micromoles per watt, and the top LED fixtures are now coming in around 2.4. The only issue with this PAR map is there's not quite enough light. For a 5x5 space, I recommend a usable PPF of 1625 micromoles. 1280.5 is not going to be enough to fully fill in a 5x5 PAR map, even if the distribution were perfect. That said, I do think that the four panels on the SF7000 are too close together. The distribution and hanging height would both benefit from moving the panels further apart. The SF7000 will have better coverage in a smaller space. Our grow light calculator rates it for about 20 square feet, but be aware, in a smaller space the hanging height will have to be even higher. Some growers may want to put the SF7000 in a 4x4 foot space. It will physically fit, but in a 4x4 foot space, I recommend only 1,040 micromoles, so I would recommend dimming the SF7000 to about 80%. There are a couple more things to review. Come with me to the test report page. For each fixture that I test, we publish complete test report pages. They're part of the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. They include the PAR maps and all the data from my tests, along with my written review. Here's the main data for the Spider Farmer SF7000 and you can find our discount codes and shopping links. If you want the best deal on Spider Farmer fixtures, shop spiderfarmer.com and use discount code CCFC. Currently, your price will be about $776. That gives the SF7000 a cost efficiency of 61 cents per micromole, which is comparable to other fixtures in its class. Below this area, you'll find the detailed PAR test data and the PAR map. If you have a large space, you can use this grow space calculator to determine how many SF7000s you would need for full coverage. And below that, you'll find my written review. Spider Farmer has earned their solid reputation with home growers. They're an industry leader, and many other manufacturers have tried to imitate the success of the SF series fixtures. The SF7000 is the latest addition to this popular series. Although it can't quite fill in a 5x5 PAR map, it performed well in my tests. After the PAR test, I measured the maximum temperature on the driver at 60.4 degrees Celsius, 140.7 Fahrenheit. The heat sink got up to 59.2 degrees Celsius, 138.6 Fahrenheit. I also tested the dimmer. The dimmer is continuously adjustable with markings at 20, 40, 60, and 80%. As you can see, the maximum PPFD was a little above the dimmer setting at 80%, and a little below the dimmer at the other settings but it's reasonably accurate. The Spider Farmer SF7000 is a solid choice for a large quantum board style grow light. I've tested LED bar array fixtures that are more efficient and have better distribution, but I think the SF7000 is going to be popular. It's well made, convenient to use, and the SF series have a proven track record of producing great harvests. If you're interested in buying this or other Spider Farmer lights, shop spiderfarmer.com and don't forget to use discount code CCFC, but you also have a chance to win this light. We're giving it away in the strain review giveaway at CocoaForCannabis.com. Each month we give away a different LED grow light to growers who write strain reviews. The SF7000 is our prize for strain reviews written in June 2021. I will ship the SF7000 that I tested to one lucky grower in the USA. Growers outside the US are also eligible to win. Spider Farmer stepped up and they'll ship an SF4000 to one lucky international grower. Visit the Strain Review Giveaway page to read all the rules and learn how to write your review and enter to win. And if you miss this giveaway, come see what our current prize is. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the growers' interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. We do not get paid for testing lights, but we do earn commissions when you make purchases using our codes. You can support our work simply by using our discount codes when you purchase grow lights. I'd like to thank Spider Farmer for sending me the SF7000 to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other PAR test reports and grow light physics videos. And I hope you come to visit us at CocoaForCannabis.com. You can read our articles, chat with our community, browse the grow light test reports, and try your hand at the grow light calculator. Don't forget that you can win grow lights by participating in our grow challenges and strain review giveaways. Remember, grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.